Uh, it is a formal. It is a formal meeting, so we will uh, conduct it as such. Therefore, there were timelines, etc., to submit information to it. Um, just remind you, if you're here representing a club, clubs have one vote. They don't have one vote per team. So if you've got extra colleagues here, it is only one vote per club um, on any of the motions that we are talking about later. If you wish to ask a question during the meeting, uh, please use ideally the raise your hand function in Zoom. If you're a if you've had your Zoom updated recently, as some of the board have, we suddenly realised the raise your hand function is now hidden under something called React. So you may need to click React to get the hand raise function. Worst case, uh, either put something in the chat. If you can't raise your hand and you can't see us, we'll keep an eye on it and we'll try and come to you if we can. And then beyond that, raise attend, get your attention some other way if necessary. But I would request that everybody stays on mute unless you are speaking or presenting. Therefore, it makes it much easier for everyone to um, understand the meeting. We've not got any uh, mischief going on in the background anywhere. As everyone is aware, let um, me just go back a second for me, Nick. We skipped ahead a few slides there. Thank you. Um, motions were circulated 14 days in advance. So there are a few things for us to vote on tonight. Um, that's absolutely fine that we, and right and proper that we stop and answer any questions, etc. as we go. So don't be afraid of these, um, um, a membership meeting. So please do raise your hand if you've got questions you wish to, to ask or clarifications. That's absolutely fine. And we will try and come to you in order. Um, but it's also not an opportunity for a huge soapbox. So we'll give you ample time to speak and then respond if necessary. Otherwise, we'll continue on to voting on motions. Um, I won't go through the agenda that you see in front of you line by line, uh, but I would just point out if you are currently logged in as anything anonymous or not your normal name or not your club name, please make sure you've either let Russell or Nick know that you're here, either with an email or even just pop your name in the chat and your club, because you'll be aware by attending here, you do get five points. So you don't want to miss out on that opportunity. But I'm also conscious people often log in with work names different names husbands names wife's names whatever just make sure you've uh, we can tell who you are so we can allocate points accordingly please without further ado and unless anyone's got any technical questions about the meeting or the agenda or can't hear me then we will proceed to the next slide please nick Okay, over to you, Nick, if you want to run through those. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Good evening, everybody. Um, yes, here's a list of the minutes and actions from the AGM had last July. Um, as you know, we introduced the 20% variance in squash levels as a pilot. That seems to have worked well over the last two seasons, and that will uh, continue on. Um, we did, at the last meeting, have a Premier League 3 raised by David Breach as a, as a potential uh, topic of discussion. That has now been picked up, and we'll be hearing from David on that um, progress on that later on in this meeting. Uh, we talked about discounted squash balls. My understanding is that this will be allowed for clubs. Clubs will be allowed to play to sorry, purchase squash balls at a discount, but at this stage, I'm not exactly sure what that discount is. Um, Dave Evans, do you have any update on that? No, not yet, Nick. We're just waiting for them to come back with us with the prices, um, and then we'll email that out to the clubs and distribute the balls to them then for those prices. Okay? Okay. Perfect. Thank you, David. Thank you. Uh, we talked about PDS for scorecards and score sheets. This was raised last year. Yes, these are now available on the Squash Rails website as PDFs, and they can still be downloaded, printed off, and you can use those then to record your scorecards and the score sheets. Um, I was asked to look into app-based recording uh, last year. I have done a little bit of work with this and spoken to League Master, Tim Fainton. Um, there is a, a, an app that's familiar in Squash called the Squaw app, S-Q-U-O-R-E. I wasn't familiar with this, but apparently that is a well-known um, app. As I understand it from Tim, the main advantage is being able to record results in real time. So your mark on, on, on a, a league match would be able to record the results as they as almost on a point by point basis. Um, I'm not exactly sure the real advantage of that. I have to say, um, Tim also tells me that uh, the the app will link to um, League Master. There are only two areas using it up in Durham and Cleveland. 
Um, it seems to work okay. Tim seems to think that it could work if Squash Wales wanted it to, but there is a fair bit of work involved in getting those systems to talk to each other, uh, and there's also a cost involved in it. And I've not been given any update on how much that cost is likely to be. Um, so at this stage, I'm personally, I don't really see a great advantage in looking at this app, particularly as you need a, a special tablet for um, entering it in. So I think we'll put this one on hold for now. As things develop, as more um, areas come on board, then maybe we can look at it as something for the future. Um, the referee updates, again, as you know, we are uh, now working closely with WSO. Um, all of our members who are uh, want to become referees need to pass the WSO level zero course, and that seems to be working very well. And that, that uh, certificate is then uploaded into Go member. Russ is involved, I'm involved, and that person, once they join uh, Squash Wales, then as a referee membership, they get added onto the League Master drop-down referee list. So that seems to work well. And uh, we'll continue continue on. Um, there were no other, um, um, sorry, all other actions from the last meeting have been have been completed. So uh, that's that's it for me, really, for the AGM of last year. That's great, Dr. Richard. Thank yeah, thank you very much, Nick. I'll just pause there for the floor. If there are any questions arising from those minutes or yeah, the actions there, with we'll just have a look in the chat. Nothing there. Anyone want to raise their hands? No, it doesn't look like it. Nick, Nick, can you read your inbox, please? Read my inbox on the chat? Yeah. Okay. Right, there's no, for, no questions forthcoming then on the actions from last year, so we shall move swiftly on to next item of business, which is the League Committee. So if you could move forward one slide for me. Not sure that I'm sorry, I'm not sure which message you asked me to pick up necessarily. Okay. Just continue, Nick. Say again. Just continue. Okay. Okay, so lead committee is our first major substantive item of business. Um, as it says there, role of the lead committee very much to support Nick in his operational delivery of the leagues um, and a sounding board. As it says there, lead committee are two permanent members, which are Nick. Nick is the the uh, league manager and chair of that group, and a member of the board, which is Phil, and then up to seven other committee members. What are you doing to me here? All right there, we go. Right. Sorry, That's right <laughs> on track. Um, <coughs> so. First item that will require a vote will be um, to appoint the board members for the forthcoming year. If we move to the next slide. We have had some nominations and some people willing to restand. One person stepping down. So, Sean, I'd like to thank you for your time on that group. Thank you for your, your contribution. You'll notice on there we have um, one, two, sorry, we have six nominations, four for re-election and two new nominations. Um, we can have up to seven. And the proposal from the League Committee and supported by the board is that we will propose this these six individuals be voted as one block to become the League Committee for 25-26 um, season, unless anyone wants to object at this point. No. OK, so in that case, Russell, can we move to a vote for the election of the League Committee members, please? Do you need him to stop sharing, Russ? Sorry, just in case, Nick, I'm not sure. Um, it, should, it should work. Right, question one, ready? You go for those watching at home. You should now have a question in front of you and be able to vote on it. We'll leave this open for about a minute or until we see the vote stop coming in. Just while we're doing this, I will just confirm under the League Constitutional Rules, um, voting at the League AGM is just based purely on simple majority.
Okay, last couple of seconds, folks. Not everyone's voted, but more than enough have voted to give us a, a suitable result. So I'm happy that we close the poll there, uh, Russell. That's a minute and five seconds. Thank you very much. I'll show you the results. Thank you. And can I just check that everyone can see those results? Just a thumbs up from anyone would be good. Yep. Okay, grand. So thank you very much. That motion obviously is carried. With uh, we got ninety eight percent voting for those. So congratulations to those uh, who've been re-elected, and welcome on board to those who have um, joined the league committee. Let's move swiftly on then to next item business, which league constitutional rules. Over to you, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Richard. Um, yes, guys, as you know, last season we had a, a major revamp of our league constitution rules involving a lot of uh, rule changes, a lot of changes to penalties that were imposed for certain things, and uh, we set up a working party to look at that, to look at the different, uh, the various changes that were proposed to, to uh, formulate them into some kind of uh, workable document, and that's what we're currently working with with the league constitution rules as we speak today. That L L R sorry LCRWP is still in operation, and we have had some proposed changes to these rules coming in for adoption this particular meeting. Uh, just to let you know who's actually was on the Lee Constitution Rules Working Party, those people are listed there. As you can see, a wide range of uh, people from various parts of uh, uh, Scottish Wales, representing not obviously not every club but representing a, a wide variety of uh, of clubs that are there to get as much of a, a rounded feel as we can. We will look at adding new members onto this group um, as and when needed uh, to ensure that we are getting a, a, a fuller picture. Um, that was the League Working Party, and the rules that we were asked to look at by the members that were submitted were basically on Rule 1, which was about uh, membership. There were some questions about Premier players being allowed to play in more than one uh, team. And we've looked at that and we have changed Rule 5.2 to accommodate it. And uh, there's also a query about match results on data entry, the timings of it, and also the verification of those results. This is something which I raised myself, I have to say, as I identified it as a, as a potential problem. So basically, all these have gone out to the uh, club leads over the last probably three or four weeks for you to have a look at, so there shouldn't be anything new to anybody. But just to run through those changes very briefly so we all know what we're, we're voting on. Uh, rule 1 has been changed in as much as the team junior, sorry, the junior membership has been removed as one of the eligible memberships to play in the leagues, and it now has to be team player junior. That's always been there. It's just that the uh, the junior membership was a slightly less less version, um, and it didn't give the same sort of uh, requirement that we need for things like insurance on court. But the team player junior now is the one that juniors will need if they want to play in the Welsh leagues. I've also added at the bottom um, that the team player membership must be in place to play in any matches during the season. The original wording said that you had to be uh, a membership at the start of the season, which you do to go onto a ranking list, but you have to maintain that membership through the season. You can't let that membership last again, simply because if you're not a member, then you're not insured one on court. So that's the that's the change to rule one uh, to one. There was then a rule to change 5.2, as I mentioned, about use of Premier players. And again, the rationale for this was to allow Premier players to play in other teams. Uh, to help develop squash in other parts of the country. And we've now said that you can play in a Premier team, or be ranked in a Premier team, and also play for another team in the leagues, providing they're not in a non... Sorry, they're not in a feeder league. So you could only play in non-feeder leagues, such as Pembrokeshire, Arari, and North East Wales. Um, this is what the members were asking for, and this is what we've, uh, we've yeah, impact, we ch changed the rule to, to implement. The other rule that we looked at was Rule 13.1, and this is basically the timing of data entry into League Master. The old rule said that you have three days um, uh, after the match to get the data in. This was created by a few clubs that sometimes on a Monday morning they were selecting teams for um, fixtures that week, and they didn't know the results of matches for the previous week, uh, which can have an effect, particularly towards the end of the season, on um, team selections and other uh, strategies that are going to be used. So what we said is that you now need to get the results into League Master within two days of the results of the, uh, sorry, within two days of the end of the fixture. 
This means that all teams then have the data from the previous week before the next week's fixtures start. Um, I don't think this will cause anybody a great deal of problem. Uh, I would say that over 90% of teams are getting the results in within 24 hours anyway. So of the 48 hours, it's, if you like, gives you an extra bit of leeway. Um, but it does mean that all results are now available before the start of the following week. And the final change that we looked at was an introduction of a new rule on verification. Um, this has always been part of League Master, that away teams have 24 hours to verify the results that have been put in by the home teams. Uh, some, uh, I think most, in fact, teams do do this, and uh, any errors are then identified and can be corrected. We have had some instances, though, where uh, team away teams haven't verified the results, and then days or sometimes weeks later, I get messages to say, hang on, that result wasn't right, that score should have been 15-2, and he's put it down at 15-12, or there's a, there's a referee point missing, or whatever. So what we decided is to have a rule of 13.11, which says that all away teams need to um, verify the results and let me know within 24 hours if there are any errors or amendments that are needed. If you don't do that, and a subsequent error is identified, you need to put in a request to review form to the League Committee, who will review the request and decide whether to make that change or not. So really, it's just putting emphasis back on the away teams to make sure that you are checking the results that the home teams are putting in, again, for the, uh, for the right reasons. So that's, if you like, the... Um, changes that are proposed uh, to be adopted in this meeting, which means you know our league constitution rules, which is, again, designed by the members, for the members, and I will implement those rules on behalf of those members. So uh, unless there are any questions, um, well, so, so let, let, let me hand back to, to Richard. That's great. Thank you, Nick. Thank you very much for that. And also thank you to all those people who've been involved in uh, proposing those, tweaking them, getting them to that point. Um, for the record, we will just let members know we have had some communication about the 5.2 rule, but it only arrived at 10 past four this afternoon, so it is certainly not available to be included in this meeting this afternoon. What we will do, though, is we will send that back to the um, League uh, Working Party for a review, and if necessary, they'll come back to member clubs for an opinion. But as it stands at the moment, we will go to a vote in a moment on, on the proposals that have been sent to you in advance of the meeting and discuss tonight but before we do that i will just pause for a second because there certainly may be questions on any of these so i will just pause and if you want to raise your hand put it something in the chat or if you really need to shout out and we'll try and answer any questions that arise no, nothing yet nick so you might have got away with it excellent news <laughs> Just get another. Uh, to be fair, as I say, clubs have, have been aware of this the last three or four weeks. So if anybody had any problems, I'm sure they would have uh, raised them by now. That's good. Okay, <laughs> so I believe then we need to move to a vote to adopt the updated rules. So, Russell, if you want to do the honours. Okay, question two is about to be launched now. Thank you to those who have already voted. We've had 50 out of 59 responses so far. We'll just give those last nine um, another moment or two. OK, that's a minute. So I think we'll close the poll there. Thank you very much. If you'd like to share the results, Russell, that would be grand. OK, I think everyone should now see those. So you'll note there, 96% majority for the uh, 
for that. So thank you again, Nick, to, to Nick and colleagues for pulling all those together. And that's a good sign that most people are pretty happy. So thank you. Thanks, okay. Russell. Okay, if we move then on to the next item on the agenda, which is um, a discussion about the league structure, and it's a proposal from a member, but Nick, I think you're going to introduce this and then we're going to have, give David a chance to speak as well. Is that the plan? That's, that's exactly the plan. Yeah. Exactly okay, happen. so you, off you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as I mentioned at the, at the start of this uh, last AGM, the uh, idea of a Premier 3 was raised. Um, uh, David Breach was uh, one of the key uh, instigators of this and has sort of taken the lead on this project. It has been discussed at length at the um, LCRWP. Uh, various options have been looked at. And um, we have, a, there, there, as you know, there is a proposal for changing the structure of the leagues. So I'll just hand over to David Breach now just to give us some overall background information on that and to talk us through the next couple of slides. Yes, David? Leave your slides on. Thank you. Well. Yes, uh, thank you, Nick. Um, uh, for those of you that uh, don't know me, um, I play my squash out of uh, David Lloyd Swansea there. Uh, she's actually uh, in Leith, but uh, I won't get started on that one. Um, my children also play squash. Um, in fact, I, I've just travelled over to the Netherlands um, where they're competing in the Dutch Junior Open. Uh, that's starting tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to that one. Um so uh, as Nick was explaining there, I, I'm presenting this tonight uh, on behalf of the LCRWP and many thanks to that group uh, for giving up their time on a volunteer basis over the last few months um, to try and get an optimal solution uh, to solve as many of the problems that we can for as many clubs as possible in South Wales. Um, I would say the, the LCRWP uh, are in full agreement with this proposal. Um, so the the reason this proposal is being put forward is to address problems that we currently have in the feeder league structure in South Wales. Uh, to give a bit of background and history, um, this idea that's being proposed today, the East-West split uh, for the feeder leagues, is not a new idea. Um, it has been tried and tested before, and it, in fact, we had that kind of structure, a very similar structure, before September 2021. Um, and I, I think it worked very well back then. Uh, then from September 2021, a new system was brought in that consisted of four feeder leagues. You had the West Central, Mid Central, South Central and East Central. Uh, that lasted for one uh, season, if you like, the winter 2021 season. Um, and then problems were being encountered, um, particularly by teams from mid-central. Uh, they were finding the matches were uncompetitive and you had multiple teams from the same club in the same division. Uh, th these problems also very much existed in the West Central and East Central regions. Um, so from January 2022, when there was a merger uh, of the mid central with the south central, which created uh, a far bigger sort of structure there, and for teams in included within that structure, in it worked very well and it solved the problems that uh, some teams had there in mid central. Uh, however, it, it did kind of leave the east central and west central teams out in the cold somewhat, and the problems have continued there to date. So this proposal now seeks to address that. Uh, so to give you an idea of the numbers, last season we had 56 teams in the South Central and only 16 teams in both East and West. Uh, so I think a fairer and more balanced approach would be to go to an East-West split. And we, we have some slides now which uh, describe the key points of the proposal. Thanks, Nick. Do you want to move on to the, the next slide there? It has the pros and cons on there that we've... Have you, are you happy with this uh, slide here, David? The, the yo-yo effect thing? Have yeah, so so just go through that. So, okay. so some of the problems, um, we have like a yo-yo effect, uh, particularly for teams in the East Central, where they're finding that uh, the team is promoted to the Prem 2 division. 
They find in they're having a very tough season there. They finish in bottom and they come in uh, back down then to the feeder, and and that's sort of repeated time and again. Uh, so then we're looking to redress the imbalance which I talked about in the leagues, and this will improve the competitiveness um, within the leagues, especially the West and East Central. Okay. Right, and no, I think yeah, that's then summarised in on the final slide, isn't it? So exactly, you yeah, should see that now. We won't necessarily need to talk through that, but I think that's the fair summary, isn't it, of uh, what you put together. So I'll just pause there again um, before we go to a vote on this for questions, because this certainly may prompt some questions from members. So feel free, folks, to either use the chat function, hands up, etc., if you wish. Okay, Nick Dyer, go for it. May need to unmute Nick if necessary. <clears throat> yeah, I've got that. Thank you. There you go. All right. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a really good idea that uh, that that working party continues to to look at the structure uh, of leagues uh, and to be responsive and to be able to respond dynamically to whatever the current needs are. Uh, I wanted to raise a note of caution about the the proposal, um, and in in that it it could well lead to too many clubs that are lower than the Premier League level being asked to travel long distance, uh, long distances and longer distances uh, than they currently do. So whether rightly or wrongly, you know, it may depend on your point of view, but I could see that that can lead to fixtures not being fulfilled, uh, uh, and I think it would also create difficulties for teams at the furthest reaches geographically and potentially create a perception that these teams are too far away. Uh, I think the current structure, the status quo, uh, mitigates that uh, far more than, than the East-West split in the proposed model would. So I would request a further review of the structure because I think it's necessary. I don't think it's quite right. But potentially a further review could look at those East-West divisions being perhaps at only one tier rather than stretching down through the number of teams and the levels of squash that it does currently uh, in the proposal. Uh, and, you know, that that if you looked at that again, for example, it could be that that working party looked at that East-West split being at the Premier 2 tier rather than stretching much further down. So those would be uh, uh, the views of our club. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Nick. Much appreciated. Um, there are two people in the chat. Um, Arwell Jones asking, would it be possible? Would it be good to explain the minimising transport issue further? So, David or Nick, do you want to comment on that? And Dan Patterson will come to you next. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so we did. So this proposal, <clears throat> um, as mentioned there on some of the slides, it did start off with a sort of Premier Three idea, and that would have been involved then travel all over South Wales and uh, a lot of the teams, uh, well, there are certainly some teams which were against that. And then it was felt to minimise the travel as much as possible, but keep the leagues competitive. We'd split it down into an east-west structure instead. And that sort of minimises the travel as much as we can, but keeps things competitive. Um, and the balance... Um, is about as good as we can get it, which, as you can see on the slides, there is 41 uh, teams in the West and 47 in the East. So hopefully that will give a sort of similar strength to East and West. And uh, with, with there are some clubs that are going to have increased uh, travel for sure. Um, and I'm thinking of Lantrissa and the Vale, Cowbridge, where they were sort of in the centre of the South Central division before they're now on the edge and um you know there are a bit more travel uh, uh for those clubs but it has tried to be minimized and also in the bottom of the west you, you have uh local leagues if you like to minimize travel further for uh new new players coming in teams at a lower standard so that's been split into the valleys and the far west to try and minimise travel there in the west. Um, in the east, the, the travel was found to be far more 
acceptable and wasn't that much different to what could be encountered in the South Central. Okay, thank you, David. I will I'll just give you a moment if you want to respond back to that or for any clarification. Feel free to unmute and respond if you wish. Sorry, oh, you I was just, it was just that I was on the working group and looking at it from North Wales, I was trying to understand the travel issues and there seems to be some sort of major trade-off that we're having to make between how competitive it is and how um, how far people have to travel. Now, as Dave suggested, the solution that the League Working Group has come up with, the League Working Party has come up with, is a sort of slight compromise with more localised and, and less tra uh, leagues and less travel uh, at the lower levels, but more, but possibly more travel at the slightly higher levels, which I assume is, is Nick's concern. Okay. Thank you very much, Arwell. Um, Nick, we'll come back to you. You've had a chance to speak. I'll just go to Dan Patterson, who's been waiting patiently in the chat. So, uh, Dan, go for it. Hi, good evening, everybody, and thanks a lot for all the time and all the hard work that's been put into this. Um, so I'm, I've just been asked to kind of give our views as uh, Cowbridge Squash Club. Um, we've talked to our members about the proposed restructure and the, ma the majority of our members feel that the travel distances are too great for um, for the you know for the level of squash that the majority of people are playing at. Um, I think there's a, obviously when you are top team are in the in Prem One, and obviously when you get to those heights, there's an acceptance that travel distance have to have to be further because you know the the quality is is so great, so you have to travel further to get those games. But we've been working really hard to try and get kind of new members and stuff like that. And we, we were lucky enough to start a new team off last season. So we've got a new D team. And I think to go back to those guys and saying, now you have to travel an hour and a half or however long, or, you know, to, to go on a, on a Tuesday night or something like that to play what's what has been sort of 15, 20 minutes of squash because they've been playing in South Central um, 7, I think, and winning sort of fairly comfortably. Um, I think we I think we might end up losing that team, um, and I think we might end up losing some team players as well if um, if we have to start introducing some of these some of these travel times. Uh, uh, and I think the what was it else was it? Yeah, I think that the the overall view is that people aren't aren't that keen to travel so far at the level at the level of squash that that we're playing. Yeah, thank you very much, Dan. Uh, Blethyn, you. you are next in the queue, so. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. So I just give the uh, opinion from the veil, really. And we have the opinion that, the you know, the boundary for the West and the East regions is just completely wrong geographically. I know, as David's mentioned there, that you want to get an even split between the East and the West in terms of number of teams. But you look at that geographically and it just does not work. The East looks all right, to be fair. That travel amongst those teams in the East looks fair. But when you've got in the west, you go, you know, got Meads, Carmarthen's far west, Cowbridge, Lentris and Vale in the east, and then Heroine Merthyr to the north. The amount of travel you're doing there is just far too much for a for a match of squash, you know, as Dan's already said. And even in that QA document, I raised this emails back and forth with Nick and uh, Phil, stating that you know additional travel will be modest, but that's just not factually correct. I've had a look in this West Division 2. We've got to remember this is not Prem, st prem Standard of Squash. This is feeder leagues. For that West 2, we're going to travel on average 78 miles per away match. Comparing that, if we were placed in the East League, the same league in the East, we'd travel 31 miles per match. Our players, we can't justify that. And hence my strong opinion on this is this needs further you know, consideration that boundaries got to move further west. Otherwise, he will be losing teams. And quite rightly, you know, that would happen in my opinion. We'll probably, okay. if it does go, we'll probably end up players moving to in play for teams within the region where they want to play. Hence, then you'll get that imbalance anyway. But that's my... Okay, now that's... Thank you very much. That's uh, very... Politely stated. Thank you, Blethyn. Um, Just before we come back to you, Nick, I'll just point out to those that may not be able to see the chat, 
Um, just for due transparency, Carmarthen saying they agree with Nick's original view. Uh, Clandriston, very same view as Cowbridge. And Hewine, same as Cowbridge and Clandriston. Ditto Carmarthen. Um, suggest it was kept as it was, but promotion perspective, Prem to take more team from bigger pool. And there's one question in here that either Nick or David may wish to comment on, which is from Cairo Squash Club. Do you have data around the expected average increase times? Obviously, one member has worked that out, but do you have any further comment on that as a response to that question? Um, yes, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I did have a look into the travel for um, just using Slantris and as an example, and you know, it, it certainly is going to be increased for them. They, they, they will have lots of clubs locally to them in, in that mid central and mid. Um, Glam, the, the old mid glam. Um, but if you look at travel, for example, to David Lloyd, that's about David Lloyd Swansea, who are currently in the West, that's about 35 minutes for them. Swansea Ashley Road is about 50 minutes uh, for Flandrescent. And when you start going over to Slanetley, Slandilo, Carmarthen, that is about just over an hour, hour, 10 minutes, something like that. Um, you know, there is one team that is. Uh, Far West Meads, uh, you know, that does result in around a two hour travel time for Flam Um, But as sort of Meads always point out, you know, uh, for them to be included, they've got to travel that distance on every uh, away match. Um, but that one journey of two hours uh, will only have to be done by these teams once per season. Okay, fine. I will come back to you then, Nick. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. And uh, and I welcome um, I welcome David making that point at the end and um, and I just wanted to make a note because David you'd mentioned the sites that would have increased travel you didn't mention Meads Meads would have increased travel as well uh, to reach uh, you know, the likes of you know uh, Vale Cowbridge Trent um, Clantrisant as it may be and and just I just wanted to finish very quickly for clarity to say we do believe uh, that that teams should be travel traveling. Uh, and that we shouldn't be excluding excluding um, uh, and and it, there shouldn't be a risk a potential of feeling the need to exclude sides because travel distances are too far. The status quo uh, uh, makes tra is makes the travel more reasonable. The east west split we believe it means is a good idea, but not stretching so far down the tiers as it does. Okay, thank you very much, Nick. Um, just to finish this off before we go to a vote. Um, clinician also in the chat, uh, just saying they disagree. You've got players also playing the Gwent leagues. There is commentary from Andrew Robinson about start times moving to 6 30. Sports centers closing at 9 30 in the area. Um, and I think that's probably related to the travel, as in the time you would need to leave to get there to start a game. Um, I don't know, Nick, if you want to comment on the start times in leagues. Uh, that, that's Nick me, yeah. Um, yes, start times, I will say, uh, matches can't start before 6.30 or after, I believe it's 7.30. So providing they're in that window, that's that's well within our rules. I think if the comment was from Andy Robinson in uh, Monmouth, I think they're moving to 6.30. Yes, that does mean you have got to travel. Uh, you will need to travel a little bit early to get there. Um, and again, traffic conditions depending on will depend on what time you need to leave. But yeah, the, 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 the 6.30 start is allowed within our rules, so there's, there's there's no issue with that. Okay. Okay. Unless there is anyone else urgently wanting to comment or speak, I will just point out this is something from members, you know, it was a discussion that came to the working party. So the, the board, et cetera, have no view on this. We're dealing, we are straight down the line with this and we will action whatever members vote on here. And that is, you know, democracy in action, as it were. Um, so we move, will move to a poll on this. So, um, Rich, can I just say one uh, thing, just to summarise up? Just well, to, uh, okay, you have had your chance. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, the, it's either this now. You know, this is the option below the members for Wales. It's either this, or we stick with the status quo. You know, we carry on with uncompetitive squash in East and West. Um, you, you know, it may not be perfect for every club. That there will be, uh, you, you know, members can put proposals forward for change in the future, um, but this is the one option we have now to move forward. It's either this or back to the status quo. So just for members to be mindful of that. 
I think I will caveat that by saying well, there's a number of comments obviously made by members of the of willingness to review further. But as it stands at the moment, we'll vote on the motion tonight and then we'll, you know, go from there and, and see what comes of that. But really, I don't know where this will fall. So, um, so Russell, could you do the honours, please, with the poll? OK, here we go. Should now be able to see that. We will certainly keep this one open and get every single vote in to make sure we've captured everybody. I think, yeah, with the board members here, I think that is it. Just give it 10 more seconds, folks. All right, that's a minute. If you could do the honours, please, Russell, and share the results. There we go. So just in case anyone can't see the screen, yes, 26%, no, 55 abstain, 19 So definitely a bit more of a split. So status quo it is for now. But I think, Nick, the, the view generally is there's still an appetite for review. Mm-hmm. I think we take that forward you know, for the, the working party to look at, to continue to look at. So, okay. No, Jude, that's, that's absolutely fine. Um, okay. As I say, depending on what other suggestions go, the status quo will be in place, I think, for winter 2024. Yeah. I don't think we're going to have time to have further discussions and um, implement this for winter. So, yes, I think winter 2024 is as is, as was the spring. And any change that will happen then from January onwards, if there can be an agreement. And that, again, will need a, an EAGM, I would imagine, to uh, get members' views on that. Yeah. OK, that's grand. Thank you much. You can stop sharing those now. Thank you. Well, thank you, folks, for participating in that. That was a good discussion. And whether you happy or not happy with the outcome of that, we member decision. So thank you very much. That's why we're meeting this evening. Um, let's move on then to the next item or next slide, which is Winter Leagues 2024, Nick. Yeah, absolutely. Well, as we now know, the Winter League 2024 will be in the current uh, feeder structure. Uh, we do have some new teams being entered in for uh, September. Uh, Carmarthen B are putting in uh, their second team, Carmarthen B. Merthyr, I understand, are putting in a sixth team. And again, they're going from team, they're going from strength to strength. And again, this is mainly new members coming in, so all credit to Merthyr for that. Uh, Bangor University are putting in a team for the first time uh, that I can remember. Certainly other people with longer memories may remember more. And uh, and Santa Land B are also putting in a fourth team, uh, sorry, a second team as well. So we are going from strength to strength with this. And I think that's very positive for uh, for squash as a whole. Um, I will now look at the what the league structure will look like for Winter 24 and incorporate these teams in. Um, I don't think South Central will change very much. It'll probably stay very much like it is. I think West Central will need to go to three leagues rather than two. So I think we may have 18 teams in West Central. Uh, so rather than having two teams of nine, which you can't have, we will have three teams of six. But again, I will look at the details on that and uh, keep obviously clubs updated um, as, as soon as I have, the, have those details. Um, you'll see on, on a slide further on, I will need to know from any other club if you are intending to put any more teams in, and I'll need to know that fairly shortly to ensure that the uh, structure uh, reflects what is uh, what is required. Uh, the Winter Leagues will start on the week commencing uh, Monday the 9th of September and run through till Friday the 13th of December, and then for the spring, the plan is to start them on Monday the 13th of Jan and finish off then by Friday the 2nd of May. And that includes a gap during Easter uh, when it's very difficult sometimes to get caught. A lot of people are away and it does give us a, a window uh, for catching up on any uh, fixtures that needed to be replaced. So that's the uh, winter 2024, uh, 24, uh, league plan. Um, what I need from 
clubs before that and to make this happen as soon as you sorry Richard you want to say something no no I was going to say you've queued yourself up nicely for the next slide oh, go on, go on. sorry <laughs> right. uh, so th this, is, this is what I need basically now from the clubs before I can get this winter season up and running um, I will as I said need, the, need to know the number of teams you have your home nights particularly and uh, also start and well, that's not quite a crucial the reason for this is that I need to know that to make sure that I get the fixtures correct and we don't have two teams playing at home on the same night in the same club. So I do need to know those numbers of teams as soon as I can. Well, there's some dates below. Uh, ranking lists of players obviously need to be in, and those players need to be ranked with an appropriate Squash Wales membership. We're doing all we can to help um, clubs ensure their teams are members, and I'll cover that a little bit in the AOB at the end of this uh, session. Um, but all members will obviously need to have uh, Squash Wales membership before going into the ranking lists. And if I could, if possible, on impose upon every club if you could ensure that all of your captains are aware of the rules and uh, the, uh, the league constitution rules to ensure that there are as few breaches as possible so to put some dates on that then if i could have from you guys your confirmation of the team numbers the home letter start times before monday the 12th of august that's not that far away, I appreciate, but again, the sooner I have this, the better. And Monday the 12th of August is the final date. I will then commit to having those fixtures hopefully published by the 19th of August. And this gives clubs then plenty of time for booking court home nights. There were some complaints last season about the fixtures being late being announced and therefore uh, clubs that were out of leisure centres particularly were finding it difficult to confirm their uh, home night confirmations. So if you let me have the... the nights by the 12th of August, I can work with League Master and get those fixtures hopefully arranged for Monday the 19th, or as close as I can, and that gives then clubs plenty of time for booking courts. When it comes to uh, rankings, the plan is to have with you um, your your list of players as enlisted in squash levels with their squash level number. They will come to you in that squash level score and all you will have to then do is confirm that they're in the right order and allocate a team and a position for them, A1, A2, A3, etc. Um, as you know, if you want to play people slightly out of order, providing it's within the 20% variance, that's absolutely fine. But if you want to play players a lot lower than their squash level would suggest, you can do that but you have to use rule 7.10 for it, which means they can play in the lower teams, but they're then not allowed to play up in higher teams just to keep things fair. So as I say, if you can let me have that data by the, sorry, I will send to you the data on the 19th of August. You've then got one week to discuss on your clubs, allocate your members into a, into a team and have that back with me by Monday 26th. I will then obviously do some checking, make sure everything's okay, make any challenges I need to with their clubs if they have got people out of order. And I will try then to get those lists into League Master by Friday the 30th of August or Monday, possibly, uh, after that weekend, which gives us then a clear week before the league starts. Let all the dust settle. People can book courts. People know what's happening. And uh, we can hit the ground running on uh, the, the first, day, first day of the season. And as I say, if you could ensure that all of your members are aware of the LCR, they know what the rules are, and uh, we can move forward then with as, as few breaches as possible. Um, the question I would have for you is there anything that you guys need from me or from uh, Squash Wales uh, to get this uh, this winter 24 season up and running in those time frames I can't see any hands up can you see any Richard? No, and no, no. if I was you I'd move on before you get some jobs Nick. <laughs> okay with, with, with that advice thank you very much <laughs> Okay, the next slide just is basically uh, just, AOB. You know, hang on, Nick, hang on, just in the chat, just to let you know, Swansea are getting an F team, and there's a question oh. for you uh, from Eva, who I think might be Cardiff. Um, is there at Cardiff University, is there an opportunity to add members to league teams throughout the season? I, oh, sorry, yeah, Cardiff Uni Squash. I think the answer yeah, is. well, to, yeah. to pick that, well, pick those first off, Swansea F, that's absolutely fine. I just need to know a, a date, sorry, a home night for you. Um, which will be very, very helpful. To answer Cardiff University and probably to maybe preempt another question, um, yes, I, if you can get me a list of players that you currently have before the start of the season, that would be great. I appreciate that you have a semester which starts something like the third week of September and new players do come in. 
that's fine. New players can be slotted in um, at any time, basically. But I will need a basic list of from Cardiff University at the start of the season so I can just set up League Master. So at least you've got some names in those teams. New players, as I say, can come in, can be added in as, as needed. Brand. Thank you very any, much. Any other questions on that? No, that's all the ones that are in the chat that I spotted. So move on then to AOB. Okay. Um, we haven't had any competent business submitted for this section of the meeting, but you know, in the spirit of cooperation, I'm quite happy to open the floor. If you've got any ones you want to start off with, Nick, now is the um, chance. Yes, the only thing I want to add on for the positive note is that uh, I mentioned earlier about uh, us trying to help you guys get the membership of your players as, as, as uh, accurate as you can. Um, Russ has been working very hard on this. And on our website, we now have, um, if you like, sort of membership section, which is a short video explaining how new people can uh, join um, the Squash Wales with their membership through Go Member and also help people about renewing their membership because you know people's membership now is, is renewing all through the year because you have the road in 12 months so we have put forward a couple of videos on the website that talk players through that so if your players are coming up for renewal and they want some help there is help available and again there's always um rest on myself who you can call okay anything else from you nick if not we'll move over to mark who's got a question no that's that that's it for me at the moment and thank you go for it mark um, just quickly regarding renewing membership, there's a couple of members with us who, since um, joining as a as a team player or <clears throat> excuse me as a social player, they've then upgraded to a referee member or a or a coach. So they've got dual memberships. They're having emails coming out saying they're expired, but mm -hmm. they're still in date. So I don't know whether that's just a, a slight glitch with the system or something that just needs to be just needs to be looked at. Um, not particularly a question, just a point of note, really. Mm. Well, I, I, I'm happy to respond to that. This is something we, we are aware of. We, and Russ and I are working hard to do this. When a player moves from being, let's say, an adult player to a referee, they obviously buy referee membership, which is fine. That starts from the day they, they have it, which is um, which then gives them 12 months' worth of referee membership. There is then a discount applied to any of their player membership months that are left so for example it's going to get quite complicated if, if if i've been playing for six months i have six months left of my adult membership i become a referee i pay my 25 pounds to become a referee uh, for 12 months but i've got six months worth of adult membership left so i will get a discount on that 25 pounds of the six months of player membership i had so you shouldn't end up with dual membership if, if that is the case we will, Russ and I will arrange for that money to be, to be reimbursed. But moving forward, that shouldn't happen. I'm not okay. Dual membership might have been the might have been the wrong the wrong phrase to use. What it is, they've the the members in question. They've had an email saying their membership has expired. I'm assuming that's going to be the original team membership. Ah, uh, but they're still in still within the referee twelve months. Yeah, so I don't know if there's a way just of stopping that email or you know it's a, it's a minor point and doesn't need much discussion here, but. Uh, I know that's that's useful. Take, take yeah, that no, that's, that, that's right. Can, can I just say, if, if on a minute, this I'll pick up, I'll pick that up with Russ and see if we can have yeah. a chat with Go Member and see if we can get those things be, stop being sent out. Yeah, wonderful. No, thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thank you for raising that, Mark. There's a similar sort of membership question in the chat. Um, it says about is there a club login where you can see membership status of club players? I don't think there is, but is that another question to take back to Go Membership or? The office, Nick. Well, Russ, again, I, I, I would, um, again, Phil and I'd be looking at this, and um, there's there's a few things that are happening. One, there are reminders going out to members now, one month before the membership expires, one week before the membership expires, and a couple of days after the membership expires. So we are giving people as much notice as you possibly can on um, their 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 membership that needs to be renewed. We've also set up a facility where any club can have a club admin who basically can log in to Go Member and pull up a list very similar to what I see of all the members in their clubs showing when their membership expires. So any club That's, admin can do that. So you yeah. can have a look at your members, you know when they're expiring, and you can internally remind people they need to go in and renew. Okay, so Ben Pinfold, Cardiff Squash Club, that's your answer. There is an admin function that he can, well, or the relevant person in their club can have to essentially see the list of members. 
So that Absolutely. is available. There you go. That's a well, good answer. Um, and Sean Sullivan and Asman has just said similar around. They've had this, um, I'm assuming, the, the same kind of reminder. So, yeah, we'll definitely take that one away. Um, I'll just pause again. Does anyone else have any other questions that they want to raise? You're going to put in the um, risk one here, the play for two teams? Or have we covered that? Covered that, I think, haven't we? Covered that. Okay, that's fine. Good. Oh, yes, we did earlier. Sorry, my bad. Okay, if not, then folks, going once, going twice, three times. If there's no further questions, we will close the AGM officially. And I'll just like to say thank you again to everyone who's attended tonight, plus the league committee, the Rules Working Party, etc., who all put in a lot of time behind the scenes. And thank you for engaging professionally and with the discussion this evening, particularly around the uh, the structure, that's very worthwhile. And I think there's we've got clearly got some more work to do on it. There's clearly conversations to be had, and we'll try and we will, we'll potentially be coming back yet next year with another option and see if we can crack this that will be solve the issues and keep the travel reasonable and and everything in between. So thank you very much, folks. Much appreciated, and I will formally close the meeting there. Thank you, Richard. Thanks, Nick. We can stop recording.